The new pivot by function was released a few months ago and there's been a lot of controversy about it. Some people love it, but others aren't that impressed. So in this video, I'm gonna compare pivot by with pivot tables to see if it's worth the hype. I'll share five problems I have with the function along with some helpful workarounds. So the reason we use pivot tables is to create summary reports. Here we have some sales data and the boss wants a report of quantity sold by year and color. So with the pivot table, of course, here, we can quickly build this out. I'm gonna take color, drag it into the rows area, quantity, drag that into the values area, and then I'll put year in the columns area. And I can create this summary report very quickly with just simple drag and drop. Now we can also create these summary reports with the new pivot by function. So here I, I'll specify a color for the row fields, comma, uh, year for the column fields, then quantity for the values, and we'll do a sum and hit enter, and that's going to give us a similar report. But as Tammy says, the formula is a bit slow to write, and that's my first issue with pivot by, is it's pretty complex and slow, especially when you consider that it has 10 arguments here that help control the totals, sorting, and filtering. And so you might be wondering why we'd want to use pivot by at all versus regular pivot tables. And the answer is automatic refresh. So as our data changes, let's say this color instead of black, it should be brown. And I just hit enter there. You'll notice that the pivot by function automatically refreshes here. It automatically recalculates because it is a formula. With regular pivot tables, we don't see that change here. We don't see brown in this list. What we need to do is right click refresh. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. Once we do that, we'll now see brown in the pivot table. And this is one of the biggest complaints with pivot tables. There are ways to automate refresh with a macro, but in general, this can cause a lot of embarrassing mistakes if you send this off to your boss or audience and forget to refresh the pivot table first. So let's take a look at another issue. And one of the first things you'll notice when comparing pivot by and regular pivot tables is formatting. With a pivot table, when we select it, we'll get the design tab appearing here in the ribbon. And there are a ton of pre-built styles here that we can choose from and instantly apply to the pivot table. There are also options for totals and report layouts here, which just make pivot tables much easier to customize. With pivot by, we don't have that because this is a spill range. And unfortunately, spill ranges and dynamic array formulas don't have any dynamic formatting yet in Excel. Now we can manually apply formatting here to the spill range. I'll just quickly go ahead and do that. Maybe I also want the total row formatted to be similar to the pivot table. However, when we do this and we change the data or the data changes, let's change this back to black instead of brown, you'll notice that the formatting doesn't move. So my uh, rows have decreased here. We, don't, we no longer have brown, but this row down here is still formatted as the total row. And one workaround for this is conditional formatting. So I'm gonna first undo a few times here and then I'm going to select down below the report a few rows I kind of have to guess as to how long this report could get and I'll go to the home tab and then under conditional formatting I'm going to choose new rule and we're going to use a formula here and for the formula I'm going to say uh, where I'm going to type equals where this cell right here I'm going to so I'm going to select the first cell in the first column J4 I'm going to hit F4 two times to just make this a mixed reference where the column is absolute but the row is relative and then we're going to say equals there and uh, the word total in parentheses because we want to target this total row here and then for the format we can just do a fill color there we'll just choose that blue color maybe the font we want to be bold we'll hit OK hit OK there. And now you can see our total row has that conditional formatting applied to it. And if we were to change this back to black again, we could see that the number of rows here re is reduced, but the total row is still formatted. And that's because the conditional formatting automatically updates as the data changes. And as your reports get more complex, so does your conditional formatting. In this example here, I've applied some conditional formatting for the subtotal columns, along with injecting the word total here in this cell. If you're interested in this, you can download the file for free. I'll put a link in the description below. And also leave a comment if you'd like me to do a follow-up video explaining these techniques. Next, we'll talk about percent of calculations. And one nice feature of pivot tables is the ability to calculate percent of totals. We'll right click here, show values as, and you can see we have all these different options for percent of totals. I'm gonna to choose percent of column total. That'll instantly change these calculations to give us the quantity as a percentage of the column total. Now the new pivot by function also has this functionality here. In this formula, I've used the new percent of function 
as the function argument here, and that's also going to give us the percent of column total calculation. Now with regular pivot tables, you'll notice that we can also do a percent of row total, and this can be a nice calculation where the percentage of total is going across the row here. With pivot by, we don't immediately have that capability. However, I do have a workaround. And the first thing I'll need to do is switch the row and column field. So I'm just going to hit Control X here to cut this, and then I'm gonna paste it here so it now becomes the column field instead, colors a column. When I do that, you'll see that we get this layout here. We're getting the correct numbers, but the layout's incorrect. And so what we can do now is actually transpose this entire function. We're gonna use the transpose uh, function here uh, to transpose the formula, I should say, wrap that there, and then that is going to relay this out into the exact same layout we have here in the pivot table to again do that percent of row total calculation. So one of my favorite features of regular pivot tables is pivot charts. This allows us to visualize our data. I'll quickly insert a column chart here. And this chart is linked to the pivot table. So any changes made to the pivot table will be reflected here in the pivot chart. And we can also insert slicers. And when slicers allow us to filter the report. I'll just quickly move these over here. And these are interactive filters. So when we click a button here in the slicer, that's going to filter down both the pivot chart and the pivot table for this data. So this allows us to quickly create interactive reports and dashboards in a matter of seconds. Unfortunately, Pivot by doesn't have pivot charts, but I've created a workaround here with what I'm calling a dynamic grid slicer. So here's a Pivot by formula, and then I have a regular chart that's using this as the source, and over here I have the dynamic grid slicer. This uses the new checkboxes in cells feature to essentially do the same thing as a slicer, which is filter down the Pivot by formula here which will also filter down the chart. One advantage with a dynamic grid slicer is there is a dropdown here which allows you to choose the field that you want to filter by, and that this is all formula based here. So as you make changes to your source data, it will automatically be reflected here. And of course, you can go in here and just quickly apply filters. I have a separate video that covers the dynamic grid slicer in a lot more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Another issue with pivot by is flexibility. So with pivot tables, I think the reason they were given the name pivot table is because it's very easy to pivot or change the report. We just do that with simple drag and drop. And we don't have that level of flexibility with pivot by. So I've created a workaround with what I'm calling the pivot by builder. And for this, I have a series of drop down lists over here where you can control or select the field that you want to use in pivot by. So if I want to have quarters under years here, I can select that. And then as you can see, the pivot by formula is updated to reflect that. Now, the reason this works is because of this pretty monstrous formula here where I'm using the indirect function quite a bit to pass through the field names that are selected over here in these cells to the pivot by function. And as Leo says here, we're kind of going full circle with this. I think we will see a lot of these builder type tools to help make pivot by as easy as pivot tables. However, the formula results are still kind of ugly out of the box and you will have to apply some conditional formatting to make the report look nice. So I I think it's cool that we now have an alternate solution to pivot tables, but we really need dynamic formatting for this to be as useful as a pivot table. Or on the flip side, it would be amazing if regular pivot tables had automatic refresh. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let us know in the comments below if you'll be using pivot by. And one thing I didn't cover in this video is the ability to use lambdas in pivot by for more advanced calculations. This can be an advantage over regular pivot tables and something I'll cover in an upcoming video. So make sure to get subscribed to our channel to get notified when we publish new videos. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.